Okay, now that we've set our tool links and our part is almost ready to machine, the last thing that we have to do is fill in our work offsets. So currently we set our Z offset, but we need to set our X and Y now. To do that, we're going to use an edge finder. So an edge finder is a precise measuring device that we use on the CNC machine. So again, we're going to find a collet that fits the edge finder. We're going to put the tool holder in the tool post. Place the collet in the nut. Now remember, this is a measuring device, so we don't have to crank down on this. How far do I put the edge finder in? I usually put it in about halfway. And then go ahead and just lightly snug up on it. Okay, I'm not cranking out, I'm not doing anything. I'm just kind of just going whoop, real quick and easy. Open up the tool post, and now our edge finder is set in our tool holder. Now, we don't have a position for the edge finder, so let's just grab another tool, close the doors, MDI mode, delete everything in MDI mode, tool 6 M6, that's a tool that we're not using. Go ahead and hit cycle start. And now we can go ahead and put our edge finder in. Again, the blank side of the tool holder goes towards us. Okay. Make sure you line those lugs up nice and close before you release the button. Okay. Now we need to set the spindle speed. When you have them do this, do you have them with the doors closed? Doors open, so 750. Okay, so now that we put the tool in there, we need to set the spindle speed. Now, we're going to do this with the doors open, so that means the maximum spindle speed that the machine is going to be set to is going to be 750 RPMs. So if we come over to MDI, and I go home, and I delete everything, and I go S1500M3, and I hit cycle start, it's spinning at 1500 RPMs. Now, a note on edge finders. Edge finders do not go faster than 1500 RPMs, period. If I was to set this at 2000 or 2500, there's a little tiny spring inside that edge finder. That edge finder's coming apart. You can actually spin an edge finder to destruction. So again, an edge finder's not gonna go any faster than 1500 RPMs. Now, because we're doing this with the doors open, the second I open up the door, the spindle speed goes down to 400 or 750, and it says that RPM is limited with the door open. So because we're doing this with the door open, setting the spindle speed any higher than 750 is unnecessary. So just set the spindle speed to 750. So let's go through that again. I reset, that turns the tool off. MDI mode, delete everything. S750, M3, cycle start. When using the edge finder, the maximum spindle speed is 750. Open the door. And again, nothing's changed because we're at the maximum spindle speed. Now, using an edge finder, the way an edge finder works is that when it touches something, it gets nice and straight, and then it gets crooked. Okay? So the edge finder works by getting straight and then getting crooked. And that's how we use it to measure objects in the machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the edge finder down, and we're going to touch the side of our part until it gets crooked. So you'll see it straighten up first, and then you're going to see it break. We have to pay attention to that break. Let me go ahead and demonstrate that with the y-axis. Now, when we set up the x and y for our parts, we're always going to set it off the back jaw. The reason being is that's the rigid jaw. If we take this part out and put another part in, we need to make sure that we're using the jaw that doesn't change. The other thing is 
is if we face the top of this part off, we could have a burr back here. So make sure that before you set your offsets, that you come in here and you make sure that your part is deburred. Because if your part has a burr there, it's going to affect the origin. Okay, so make sure your part's deburred. Now let me show you the break. I'm going to do the Y first. It doesn't matter if you do the X or the Y first. I'm going to do the Y first so you can see the break. So handle jog Z 10 thousandths. Bring the edge finder down. Now you want to make sure that you don't hit the vise back here. So how much of the edge finder do you have to bring down? You only have to bring the edge finder about 100, 200 thousandths below the tip. You don't need to bring it way up here. We're going to use the small part not the large part. So we're going to come down here. Y, I'm going to move it close to the part. You can see I'm about a hundred thousandths above the top of the part. So I'm going to bring this down, make sure I'm not going to hit the part. I'm going to bring this down. That's pretty much the top of the part. I'm going to bring it down about that far. That's all you need. Okay, 100, 200 thousandths, that's all you need. Now I'm going to demonstrate the break. So I'm going to go Y, 10 thousandths, and I want to go, I'm on the back, I want to go negative, so I'm going to go counterclockwise. And you'll notice it's crooked right now. Okay, when it touches the part, see how it's straightened up? Okay, that means it's touching the part, but the, touch, the part isn't pushing it yet. I'll go one more click. See how it broke to the side? So when you're using the edge finder, you want to flick the edge finder so that it's crooked. Then you want to move the edge finder just one click at a time until it straightens up. See how it's getting straighter? There we go. And now the next click is going to break right there. Okay. So every time that you touch a side, make sure that you're looking the same way. When you're doing Y, you want to be looking this way. When you do the X, you want to be looking this way. Okay, so when you see me do X, I'm going to be looking this way through the machine to see the break. For Y, I'm looking straight back towards the machine. Now, I'm going to back up one. The edge finder gets nice and straight. I'm going to go to one thou, and I'm going to do the same thing. So you'll notice that we're using the same procedure for both the Z, the Y, and the X. 10 thou until it breaks, back off one, one thou until it breaks. So now I'm in one thou, and it should take me less than 10 clicks to break. There we go, it broke. That is the edge of the part, okay? What I need to do is I need to compensate for the radius of the edge finder, because right now, because of the diameter of the edge finder being 200, I'm now 100 thousandths past my Y0. So Z, 10 thousandths, I bring the edge finder up, and I usually bring it up until I'm set to zero. Okay, so I bring it up above the part, I set my hand, handle jog wheel to zero, then I go Y, and I go 10 clicks counterclockwise. That now compensates the edge finder for the diameter of the edge finder itself. I am now directly over the edge of the side of the part. I can then go into my work offsets. So I go offset, work, so right arrow, then down arrow until I get to the Y axis, and now I can hit part zero set, which is right here underneath the F4 button. Okay, that's the distance from the home position, which is the back of the machine, to the edge of your part. Now I can go ahead and do the X. So handle jog X, move it past the edge of the part. I usually like to edge find in the middle of the part, so you'll see me edge find directly in the middle of X or directly in the middle of Y. Okay, I like to use the middle. I go to Z, 
and I bring the edge finder down just about 100 or 200 thou. Okay? Then I go X 10 thou, and I come over. Again, I'm just using single clicks. Click, 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 click. There it's straight. You may not see it from your view, but I can see it from this side view here that it's nice and straight. My next click should break it. There we go. I back up one, I go to one thou, and I go until it breaks. Click, 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 breaks, right there. Now this will give you a better representation of how we compensate for the edge finder. But now I would go Z, 10 thou, bring the edge finder up. I put the handle at zero. Okay, I put my handle jog at zero. I go X and I want to move the edge finder to the right. So I go clockwise, 10. I go to work, so offsets work. I go to my X and I hit part zero set. Now, I want to check this before I go any further because if I'm not, if I haven't compensated for my edge finder or I use the edge finder incorrectly, I need to know that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the spindle. Okay. I'm going to go to MDI mode. I'm going to go home. I'm going to delete everything that's there. Now that everything is deleted, I'm going to type in G0, X0, Y0, G54, G90. Enter. So G0, X0, Y0, G54, G90. Okay. G0, X0, Y0, G54, G90. Okay. What this code means is that we filled out G54 when we did our offsets. So this is X0, Y0 in relationship to the origin we just set. Go ahead and close the doors. Go ahead and hit cycle start. And the machine should move to the upper left corner of your part. So now what I want you to do is come in here and just handle jog Z within about an eighth of an inch, okay? You don't have to touch it, but get it within about an eighth of an inch. And make sure that the center of the spindle is on that corner. If the center of the spindle is not on that corner, you need to go back and reset your X and Y zeros. 